Professor Rips is, uh, I was a conference celebrating Professor Rips. His work has been uh, very, uh, certainly very profoundly influenced my own, so very, very happy to be here. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is joint work uh, with Maladin, uh, Beskvina, and also some with uh, Pei Wang, who's a grad student of mine. And uh, so this is actually work that Maladin and I thought about a, a, a fair while ago, and uh, we're starting to get back into it with uh, the student of mine, and so it's kind of like an archaeological project at, at this point. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, definable subsets of, uh, of F, which is a, a free group, A, B, C, whatever. And uh, so what is a definable subset? Well, I'm not going to define it. <laughs> But an example would be something like the, uh, the set of all elements P. <laughs> and it, it, this is an example. So elements in the free group F with, with the property that maybe there exists another element, let's call it H, in the free group uh, such that uh, H equals P squared. No. Uh, P equals H squared. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, okay. So that uh, uh, P, P is something squared. That's what I was thinking of anyway. So, so for example, uh, uh, A would not be in this definable set, if we call it D, say, uh, whereas A squared would be. Okay. And so a, a, a definable set, you can sort of extrapolate, you get to use quantifiers and uh, symbols rep representing uh, elements of the free group and in uh, open proposition. Anyway, this, this, is, this is the main example and, and uh, you can um, then guess what the general definition is. So uh, this, this is an example, is an E set. So it, it's defined using only one quantifier E. And of course, you can imagine you know, the set of all P such that for all H, there exists a G, blah, blah, blah. You can keep going. When you say one existential quantifier, you're allowing it to take the existence of couples, right? That's a single element. Sure, sure. That's correct. But, but in this case, uh, we're thinking about, OK, so, so we're going to think about um, uh, so uh, P, P is a subgroup of the free group. So D, uh, sorry, P is an element of the free group. So in particular, we're thinking about uh, a definable set for, for us will be a subset of the free group. Okay. And it's convenient uh, to think about the, uh, uh, to, to, to identify the, the free group with uh, homomorphisms from uh, Z into the free, free group. Of course, you just, if, you, if you're given an element W here, you identify that with the homomorphism that takes the generator of Z to W. Okay, so uh, it, we're going to mostly be shifting our point of view from subsets of the free group to homomorphisms from uh, Z to the free group. And so instead of uh, thinking about this definable subset D this way, we're going to think about it uh, more like this. We'll, have, uh, we'll think of P as being a copy of the integers, and uh, we can imagine mapping the integers to the integers by multiplication by 2. And so we could think about this set D as being the set of all homomorphisms uh, P from Z into the free group with the property that there exists an extension up here. Okay, so changing uh, the, you know, 
the, the definition in, in terms of symbols sort of in t to, to a generalized kind of extension problem. So th this is the kind of thing we'll be, be studying today. So that this is an example of an E set, set of all P so that there exists an extension here. And uh, more generally today, we're going to be focused on uh, this kind of definable set. So you're given, uh, the, the, the bottom group for us today will always be Z. That's because we're talking about definable subsets of the free group. And we'll be given uh, homomorphisms, H to G. And we'll be uh, wondering about, just like here, the set of all homomorphisms from P into the free group so that for all extensions H of P, in other words, lifts like this, there exists a further lift G. Okay? So this is an example of an AE set. or you might call it a basic AE set. And, uh, okay, so there are two things. One, uh, this isn't the most general AE set. For instance, for experts, I'm ignoring things like inequalities. But those are technicalities we're going to ignore for today. So we're going to pretend that this is the general AE set for today. And uh, we're going to rely on uh, okay, I don't know why I moved it. One justification for focusing on AE sets today is that, uh, uh, a result of Zlil is that, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, the set of definable subsets of the free group is exactly the Boolean algebra generated by AE sets. Um, so these are a particular kind of uh, AE uh, of definable sets, and uh, in some sense, when you, if you understand all uh, AE sets, then you understand all definable. Uh, subsets of the free group uh, by by Sella. What do you mean here by Boolean algebra? Okay, so you can uh, if you if you have a set or a bunch of sets, you can uh, you take finite unions, finite intersections, complement. Okay, so uh, so so this is the focus of today. So we're given some sort of data, which you, which is this. Uh, <coughs> sequence of groups, and, and from data, you can define uh, D of data, sometimes usually just called D, the definable set. So associated to this diagram, we have a definable set. The set of all homomorphisms from P to F with the property that all extensions to H admit a further extension to, to G. Okay, so that's what we want to understand, these, uh, uh, these AE sets. And uh, so these are positive AE sets. well, yes. As I said today, I'm pretend these are positive. Well, actually, the, we would call these positive, yes. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm ignoring the distinction between uh, a general AE set and, and things defined like this, just for today. Okay, so, so today, 
we want to uh, prove uh, a ridiculous statement that's obviously false, but today we're going to write a theorem. And uh, it, it, it says this, the only uh, definable subsets of the free group are the empty set and the free group itself. So there are only two. Okay. This is patently false, but let's try to prove it anyway and see how far we get. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the goal today. The main thing is then the, the, the proof of this statement. Okay, so, uh, so, so that's what we're, we're going to do today. Let's see, let's see what we can say. Hmm? Okay, so, so, uh, so just a couple comments, I guess, to, to start. Let's see, is that where I wanted to go? <laughs> yeah, I, I can say anything now, right? And, 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 uh, okay, so, so, so one thing that's going to be important for us is that there's an operation uh, that we'll use uh, a fair bit on, on the, our set of data. And it, it's this. Uh, some, so here's our set of data. And if somebody hands us uh, a homomorphism from H to some other group, then we can form uh, the pushout, you know, in groups. And here's equal. So uh, we have, uh, here's our original set of data. Here's a new set of data. So uh, th this new set of data we'll call f of data. So we started with data, and now we have an, a, a new set of data given f called f of data. And then the def it, this get, uh, we have the definable set d, which was uh, d of data. And uh, uh, then associated to this new one, we have uh, the definable set associated to the new data, and that we'll call f of d. Okay, so there, there's a simple operation. If you're given a homomorphism here, uh, you can change your data. Well, this is a homomorphism. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes, 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 yes. You can imagine that you can phrase all this in terms of, of varieties if you like. Right, so algebraic geometers will translate this in a slightly different way. Okay. And, uh, and this, I know, these are right? no, it, 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 there's no, right now there's no relation between, between the two. Well, let me, let me give you, let me uh, tell you, okay, here's a special case that's going to be important for us. So if, if F happens to be surjective, then, uh, then in data, we're, this is along the lines of what you're saying, then, then in data, we're, 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 we're studying all homomorphisms from H that lift to G. In H of data, we're studying, uh, if this was a quotient map, we'd be studying all, uh, We'd be asking that all lifts to H that happen to factor through H hat lift to G. So they're, they're, uh, that's a, a less stringent condition because we're, we're only stud the, the, the for all is uh, um, we're, 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 we're only required a smaller set of maps lift. So, so if, so here's a comment. If, if F is an, an epimorphism, is an onto map, then uh, D is a subset of F of D. Okay. Uh, the, no. The, it, it seems you have to think a little bit, but you're, you're only re here, you, here you're requiring that fewer maps lift. Okay, 
So, so the main proposition that we need. Well, let let let's let's not get fo let's let's not get bogged down on that point. Okay. So, so the main proposition is is that we need is this. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Either, oh, okay, I need another definition while we're here. So usually I'm going to call Fs that are epimorphism Qs, so just for me. And then if uh, Q1 up through Qn is a set, of epis, um, qi from h to hi, then uh, well, let's call this q vector and define a q vector of d to be the intersection, q1 of d intersect q2 of d intersect dot 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 intersect qn of d. And, and since d is contained in each one of these, we still have, have this inequality, okay, inclusion. Okay. So remember, we're trying to prove here that there are only two definable sets. And uh, so the main proposition is this. Um, Okay, either, so we're always in this setup with data. So either in data, uh, H has the form P star of a free, a free group, or uh, D equals Q of D for some uh, Q vector, so some Q vector equals a finite set of epis, just like over there. Okay, so this is the main proposition. Either we're in a very special situation where in data, which maybe I should keep data over here, so um, P maps to H maps to G, either H is very special, it has the form P star of free group with the map P to P being the identity, so either we're in a very special situation that you can understand sort of ad, by ad hoc reasons, or D is equal to uh, this finite intersection of what you might think of as being simpler definable sets. Okay, now I, I have to justify why this set is simpler than this one. But this proposition is true. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> nothing's true. No, nothing's true for uh, a, a, a while. Okay. 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 <laughs> Keep, there, there. Yes. Yes. Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. So, so uh, well, let me let me finish. Uh, let me uh, let me keep going here. So, so here's a comment. So, comment. Um, we may assume. that in data, um, all groups are limit groups. So I have to tell you what a limit group is. Okay. 
So limit groups, are, it, it's a concept that uh, I certainly first heard about from Zlil. And uh, so uh, H <coughs> is a limit group if it has the following property. So for all finite subsets, uh, S of H, there is, exists, a homomorphism H from uh, H into uh, F, the free group, uh, such that H restricted to S is um, injective. In other words, if you're interested in study, well, uh, so, so it, it should be reasonably clear. If you're, if you're interested in studying as we are, homomorphisms from groups to the free group, these limit groups are, are important. And uh, there are some, uh, these, these groups are, are, are very nice groups. They have some uh, great properties. Their structure is understood. But uh, <coughs> various things about them. Uh, so first of all, limit groups. are finitely presented. Um, uh, what else is true about these things? Uh, if, uh, if H is not a limit group, then uh, there are finitely many quotients, there are finitely many uh, quotient maps, qi from h in, into hi, such that such that any uh, homomorphism H from H to the free group factors through uh, some one of these QIs. Okay. So th this makes it, uh, th this sort of uh, makes it clear what I w meant by if you want to study a map from H to the free group, you may as well, you're, you're really thinking about maps through limit groups. And then the, uh, another thing that we're going to need is uh, something uh, usually referred to as limit group induction, which says uh, any sequence um, of limit groups So A H uh, one surjects to H two, surjects to etc. Stabilizes. Okay, and so what, what, what this allows you to say uh, 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 when working with limit groups that any time you uh, take a quotient, a proper quotient, you can say you're done by induction. Okay, so uh, in particular. If, if we show, for example, that uh, D equals, you know, Q1 of D intersect dot, 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 intersect Qn of D, and maybe uh, the result that we want to show, like we're, uh, you know, the crazy claim that these groups are only the empty set or free groups, well, if you know by induction that each one of these is either the empty set or the free group, then certainly D is either the empty set or the free group, so you're done. Okay, so, so if we could prove this proposition, which is obviously false, then we'd be done. But the, 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 the sort of the gist of this talk is how far you can get proving this, tr trying to prove this crazy statement. So in the previous statement, H can be any kind of generator, right? Yes, yes. But, but if it is, replace it, you, you know, yeah. we'll replace it with a limit. Correct. 
Okay, so, so there we are. We're stuck with, with trying to prove something crazy. Okay, so, so now we're up to proving the proposition. So remember the proposition, H equals P star free, or uh, uh, D equals Q of B. Okay. So let's, uh, now we're going to prove it. So suppose not. Okay. Well, uh, let's, in, uh, so uh, H is a limit group, so enumerate the uh, limit group quotients, the proper limit group quotients. Of, um, of H, so we have uh, a, a, sorry, H to H1, we'll call that Q1, H to H2, that's Q2, etc. Okay, and so our goal uh, so, and let's define Q vector sub N to be just the first N of these, Q1, Q2, up through Qn. And since, since th this, uh, you know, uh, if you p give me your favorite set Q, uh, it'll eventually appear as a subset here. So what we really want to show, uh, 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 well, so, so what, we're, what we're told by hypothesis, if this uh, proposition is, uh, is false, that uh, the, the, the difference Qn uh, of D minus D is non-empty. Non okay, so in other words, there's an element here. There's some homomorphism, uh, P sub N, in this set. Okay, so, so uh, let's see, what is this telling us? Remember we have data. And uh, now we have all these maps, P sub N, to the free group that aren't in, they're, they're, they aren't in D. So in other words, it's not true that all extensions to H further admit an extension to G. So uh, since not all do, there is a witness. There's one, there, you can pick one that doesn't. So there exists an HN with the property HN does not extend to G. So this, we'll call this a failure. HN is a failure for PN. So it, it's telling us uh, why PN is not in D. Okay, so what we have now is a sequence. So we have a sequence of these uh, HNs and a sequence of PNs. Uh, and that makes us very happy, okay? So uh, here's why. We're gonna change our point of view a little bit at this moment. So uh, a homomorphism H from H into F uh, gives an action of uh, H on the Cayley graph. We've picked a, a, a basis for F, the Cayley graph. Um, well, the, the Cayley tree, which is the universal cover of the Cayley graph uh, of the free group. Okay, so uh, we have a bunch of H's, we have a whole sequence of H's, so we have a whole sequence of actions of H on a, a tree, and you can think of this as a tr real tree, in other words, you can, you can give the uh, edge lengths, uh, 
you can give the edges here a length, say one. So this is now a real tree. So we have a sequence, let's call it, uh, gives an action. So let's call this, the name of this tree, T sub H. So we have a, we have a sequence. Uh, TH1, TH2, dot, 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 of real trees, of H actions, actions, of H on real trees. And uh, if you projectivize this space, it's compact, so you can take a limit. So there is a limit uh, up to taking a subsequence. So let T sub H be the limit of these T sub H i's. Okay, uh, so we have an action now of H on a perhaps very complicated uh, real tree. And uh, the, the RIPS machine allows us to understand Uh, T sub H, okay? So this is, uh, uh, we've changed our point of view. We, uh, we got, got a bunch of homomorphisms. We viewed the homomorphisms as actions on trees. We took a limit, and now uh, be, uh, this is precisely the kind of thing that uh, Rips, uh, we can understand through Rips's work. So let me talk a little bit more about that. So uh, here's, uh, so, so we changed our point of view once here. We're, we're now viewing actions of H on real trees. And we're going to change our view uh, slightly once again by thinking of a real tree as dual to a lamination on a two complex. OK, so uh, view our real tree as dual to a lamination on a two complex uh, X of H for H. This just means a finite two complex whose fundamental group is H. OK, okay so uh, let me tell you how this goes. So uh, if you have X sub H, a finite two complex whose fundamental group is H, you can take the universal cover. So here's a simplicial, uh, simply connected two complex. And you have T sub H. H is acting on both these spaces. And you can build an equivariant map from one to the other. I think, uh, by the way, um, you know, this is all uh, you know, well-known well stuff. Uh, th this construction I might have first seen from Dunwoody. So anyway, so we want to construct an, equ an equivariant map like this. So what do you do? Uh, you, you pick a vertex, pick a vertex here in this, this complex, and map it anywhere you like over in T sub H, and then extend equivariantly. Okay. And do that for every orbit of vertex. So now you have a map defined on the vertices. And if you know where the vertices go, uh, you, right, this has vertices, edges, and two simplices. So if you know where uh, uh, the vertices go, you know where the ends of any one simplex goes. So you know where this vertex goes, you know where this vertex goes. If you're in a real tree, there's a unique geodesic between the two. That's where you map that one, one cell. And if you're wondering where a, a, a two simplex goes, well, by this time, you know where the boundary of the two simplex goes, right? You know where the vertices go, and so, right, so you see a, a, a little spanning tree. And you, it, 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 you wanted to find the map to extend over the triangle, so you just uh, collapse part of the triangle uh, to map to this edge, and collapse part of the triangle to map to this edge and collapse part of the triangle 
to map to this edge, and then this whole bit in the middle will map, will map to the vertex. Okay, so there's a, a standard way of uh, of uh, transferring sort of the tree into data on a two complex. For example, now if you're given if you're given a path in the two two complex, you can measure its length by projecting that path over to the to the tree, and you you have a metric here. And uh, so th now the, your tree is encoded by a two complex with some extra data called a lamination. And uh, what uh, the RIPS machine does is it takes, it, well, you, th this is all equivariant. So in the end, you have this two complex, finite two complex down here. Who knows what it looks like exactly? but with, with a, uh, a finite two complex with uh, this sort of structure. And uh, what the RIPS machine does is it, it takes as input these kind of things and turns them into a normal form. Can you explain again the meaning of lamination? How it uh, so for us, all the lamination is, is uh, the, the structure uh, uh, on, this, uh, on, the unit, on the two complex given by pulling back points of your, pulling back, uh, points of your image. For instance, the, the pre-image of this point is, that's what I mean by this little line. And of course, uh, the two complex continues, and so these, these uh, pre-images will, pre will extend. And if you give uh, yourself a path here, you can project it forward into the, the tree, and so it has a length. If your path happens to run along one of these point pre-images, the, it, its length will be zero. But if it, it runs transverse to these uh, leaves, then uh, it, it will have a, a, a positive length over here. And, and this is, the, this is the, what I'm calling lam measured lamination. So transversely measured lamination here, this structure. Okay, and uh, there are two main examples that you should keep in mind. Uh, one is where T sub H is simplicial, and uh, in this case, the, the RIPS machine you can interpret as producing for you uh, a uh, so, so in this case, x sub h is just a, a finite graph with lengths on the edges. Or uh, the other key example is t sub h is dual to uh, measured lamination on a surface. So these are well studied. Uh, so you're supposed to picture a surface together with, uh, well, if you, if, if, if you know what a lamb, uh, 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 if you know what a lamination on a surface is, this might mean something. If you don't, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not going to do you any good. But, but. So two main examples, either, uh, either X sub H turns out to be a, a surface or a, or a graph, and you can then make other examples by uh, joining such things. So what, the, what you should think of as a general example, although it's not quite true, but for this talk, you should think of the general picture of X sub H should be, uh, has some graph pieces and some surface pieces, and together with laminations, right? The edges have lengths. So, so this, is, this is what X of H looks like today. Okay. And you, you can do the same for P. Uh, remember, so where were we? So recall where we were. We had a, a, our data. And P was just a copy of Z. 
And, and then we had these PIs, and PI was in uh, Q sub I of D take away D, and then for each QI we had a, 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 a failure HI. And from the, the T sub H, which we're sort of uh, identifying with the same data as, as uh, in X sub H is the limit of the T sub H I, okay? And similarly, you have, uh, you can take the limit of the, the, the P's, so T sub P is the limit of uh, T sub P I, and th this is just an action of Z on a real tree, so here um, X sub P is just a circle. Okay, so, so if we have this sequence of failures, then uh, we have, uh, our new picture is, we have, let's think of it geometrically. We have the circle, which is X sub P, mapping into, um, somehow immersing into X sub H, which is a graph maybe join some surface pieces. Okay, so, so uh, our new picture is uh, after, after extracting these sequences and, and passing over into the world of geometry, we end up with uh, a picture of a circle immersing into a two complex that has a, a, a transverse lamination. Okay, uh, so there are two cases. Case one is it may be that if you look at the orbit of the tree T sub P, you end up with all of T sub H. Okay, actually that's gonna be uh, case two. So the, uh, it, it may be that if you look at the orbit of the, the tree T sub P inside T sub H, you don't get everything. So in, in this picture here, we have the circle immersing into X sub H, and it may be, for example, that the circle misses the lamination on the surface. Okay, so in this case, so suppose the immersion of the circle into X sub H misses the surface. Okay, then we can talk about shortening. So I have to say then Shorten, and this is shortening is another concept of uh, rips in Sala that I'll try to describe. Okay. So uh, given a homomorphism H from H into the free group, uh, one can measure the length of H in terms of its effect on, uh, the, on generators. Of H. So H is finitely generated, fix a set of generators. If you have H, it takes those generators to elements of the free group. They have length there in terms of the basis. Just add up the length. That's the length of, uh, of H. Okay, and we could, we could have ahead of time, arrange ahead of time, ahead of time, that the HIs are shortest failures. So uh, HIs are these witnesses. If, they're, if they exist, they're shortest witnesses. So now we'll assume that these HIs are shortest failures. And the point is there are enough
automorphisms of, of a surface so that some uh, automorphism, let's call it alpha, in so this is S alpha. Some alpha in mod S shortens the HI. In other words, HI composed with alpha is shorter than HI. Okay. So we're ready for the trick. So uh, here we have our PIs mapping to F. Here we have our failures, HI. But now we're going to compose them with alpha extended over the whole of H. Uh, and these are now shorter, so they're no longer failures. So that means there exists GI prime lifting HI composed with alpha. So now you have a new sequence to study. Uh, take the limit of the trees you get by looking at the GI prime. And uh, so discover, apply the same, uh, the same procedure and discover using RIPS machine that, well, either the surface piece of uh, x sub g is equal to the surface piece of x sub h, or uh, uh, or S uh, o, 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 well or uh, S covers non-trivially some uh, some other surface, S, let's call it S hat. Okay. Shorten the HIs. They're, therefore, they're no longer failures. Therefore, there's a lift to G. Since there's a lift to G, you can, you can uh, take the limit of these GIs. Uh, you get T sub G. It's dual to, uh, uh, to a, a lamination on a two complex using the RIPS machine the the part of uh, so uh, the part of the uh, you you have a map from x sub h into x sub g and the 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 part of this the, the surface corresponding to h has to map to a, a surface part of g and that map has to be a finite uh, finite cover okay so anyway. So if, if the surface pieces are equal, then uh, you can actually continue this kind of argument and end up uh, adjusting H until H and G are equal. If H and G are equal, then there's no obstructing, obstruction to lifting HI. That's a contradiction because HI is a failure. Okay. So anyway, so the conclusion here Yeah. Repeat it again. Okay. Uh, yes. So um, let, let, let me uh, let me write this, and then I'll I'll say. Okay. So the conclusion is that either 
uh, S is uh, covers <coughs> finitely covers some other surface S prime or the surface pieces of, uh, I'll, I'll say it this way, T sub G and T sub H agree. Okay? That, that, is that good enough? Say it again. Okay, well, yes, so, so uh, if, good, because I didn't say it. Yeah, if, if H and G turn out to, so if, if the surface parts are the same, you're well on the way of, of proving H equals G, in which case there's, no, there's a contradiction because then if H and G are equal, then H prime lifts and it's not supposed to lift. If they aren't equal, then, so if, S is not equal to S prime, then uh, can replace uh, S by S prime. So, um, so in other words, there's a there's a there, there's a homomorphism from uh, H to H hat uh, with the property that uh, the H I's you, you have these homomorphisms H I into F. And uh, using the fact that there's this cover, uh, you can find H I hats. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll call this an inclusion. You can find H I hats extending the H I's. And the surface piece of, uh, uh, of T sub H is the surface piece of H but replaced, but with S replaced by S prime. So you can enlarge the surface. Okay. Okay. Mark, there, may be several there may be. A surface may not be connected. It could be. It could be. Then you, yeah. Uh, th th this is a, a toy picture. In, in, in the toy picture, then you would start worrying about the graph part. Okay. Okay. But, but nonetheless, uh, this sort of scheme works in, in every situation. And uh, uh, and the point is, here, you can't keep replacing a surface. You know, a, if you have a, a sequence of covers, S goes to S prime goes to S double prime, you know, these are covers, that can't go on forever. So this process can't stop. And so at some point, you're in the situation where the surface pieces are equal. And, uh, and then you're well on, as I say, you're well on your way of showing that, uh, of getting a contradiction. Okay. It's impressionistic, I agree. Okay. But there's a case, uh, case two, finally. By the way, and, and it, it, this seems to work. Nothing I've said so far is, uh, this, this is legitimate proof so far. I mean, I haven't said anything that, go, that goes wrong. But uh, case two, case two, remember, is that uh, uh, if, I, if I look at the orbit of T sub P inside T sub H, uh, th these are equal, okay? So uh, the image, uh, the orbit under H of T sub P inside T sub H is the whole thing. So in the, in the picture here that we drew, uh, T sub P is supposed to be thought of as uh, uh, just a real line. So it's represented by a circle and it's immersing into uh, our picture of T sub H. And T sub H we were drawing like this. Uh, there's a surface. And uh, now's where things can start to go wrong. Okay. So what we'd like to do is, uh, for example, um, add a hypothesis so that uh, T sub, 
the image of T sub P can't meet uh, the, the surface, the surface lamination. Okay, so, so here's what you do. This is, uh, so define, uh, so, so say, Uh, the, the other case was where they weren't equal. Yeah. This is the case where they are equal. Yes. Then there, then, then there would be no surface. So we're going to add a con we're going to add a condition that will force away the surface pieces and give us a restriction on how uh, this image can intersect the simplicial pieces. Okay. So uh, say. Uh, P sub i is a test sequence if the relative lengths of the pieces of this word, remember this is a word in the free group now, I'm thinking back in that, if the pieces of P i goes to zero, Relative length goes to zero with i. Okay, so what's a piece? So p, uh, now we're thinking of it as back thinking about it as a word in the free group. It might be uh, a cubed, oh, uh, b, c squared, a, uh, c, c capital C is the inverse of little c b. Okay, so uh, here uh, you, you notice, for example. Um, B C squared appears twice in this word. It appears here once in the forward direction and once in the backward direction. That's what a piece is. It's a, a piece is a word, a subword that appears tw in two different ways. Okay, and so a, a test sequence is a sequence where the uh, when you look at the word the the subwords, uh, well. You don't see repeats. Well, or maybe you do, but if, if you do see repeats, there the length of the repeats is getting smaller and smaller. Okay. I'm going to need just a couple more minutes. Okay. So um, assume now. that this pi is a test sequence, then the image of uh, t sub p into t sub h misses surface pieces. Why is that? If you have a lamination on a surface and P is somehow coming through there. Uh, if you take any little segment uh, that crosses the lamination, which we're assuming this may, uh, it, it comes back and, and intersects itself somehow. And that would give a piece. That would give a piece. And that's not supposed to happen. And further, uh, hmm? tiny, tiny. Well, this is in the limit. If you see a piece in the limit, if you see a piece in the limit, then in all advanced pieces, you see a piece of definite length. Okay. Uh, further, uh, T sub P intersects each edge of the simplicial part of uh, x sub h at most once. After all, it, if it goes across an edge twice, you see a piece. Okay, and we're assuming that, that uh, we're in the case where t sub p hits every edge. So it hits some edge. 
So it hits some edge once, and the conclusion is h is equal to p free product sum simpler group h prime. Okay. Uh, okay. So finally, let's wrap up here. Yeah, th th it, right. That's exactly right. Okay. So uh, define two definable sets, uh, D and D prime, to be equivalent if their symmetric difference contains no test sequence. And then the conclusion here is, uh, so the, th the actual theorem is that uh, um, if D is a definable subset of the free group, then D is equivalent to the empty set or the free group itself. Okay. So uh, anyway, that was a very uh, quick outline here, but I wanted to get to the, the, you know, the key thing is that the, the RIPS machine allows us to understand what these limits of, uh, these limit real trees actually look like. And uh, anyway, I these are, so these are the ideas we were talking mo about mostly uh, a good number of years ago. And I think, uh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure things have advanced quite a bit beyond uh, here. And Zalil's used this stuff. We're just, the goal is to, uh, is to uh, internalize what Zalil has done. Um, so anyway, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>